Hello, my name is Marina Litvak. I'm working with Natalia Vanetik from Shaman College of Engineering and a, my former PhD student, Lim Yao, who is currently academic staff member at Pijin Information Science and Technology University. I want to present our joint work uh, dealing with automatic detection of negative campaigns in Israeli municipal elections uh, from a data set they collected from a Facebook and they composed of a, a text written on a Hebrew. So um, political uh, competitions which aim at promoting the candidates uh, chances to be elected uh, usually use uh, uh, positive or negative campaigns and uh, when positive campaign highlights a uh, candidate's achievements and uh, skills and uh, their future programs, uh, a negative campaign uh, mainly focuses on the negative sides of the competitors. And unfortunately, in recent years, we can consider more and more uh, use of uh, negative uh, campaigns by, by political uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm talking um, I will talk about uh, uh, our challenges challenges our research questions uh, I will describe a general pipeline uh, which we propose for automatic detection of negative uh, campaigns from uh, Hebrew uh, posts and uh, <clears throat> then I will uh, describe our data set. The data set uh, uh, containing the uh, uh, posts written in Hebrew by our political uh, candidates and also uh, three data sets uh, from the uh, offensive language uh, domain uh, which are written uh, on uh, uh, in different languages, three different languages, Hebrew, English and Arabic. Uh, I will describe our methods, including the uh, monolingual and multilingual text representations and different uh, classification models. And then I will describe the uh, evaluation uh, in uh, three different uh, scenarios, a uh, monodomain, uh, uh, cross-domain, uh, monolingual and the uh, cross-domain and cross-lingual scenarios. Uh, so, our biggest challenge is uh, uh, Hebrew. Hebrew is known as a low resource language and um, uh, therefore it uh, um, doesn't have a lot of uh, sources and a lot of data sets or uh, tools uh, and uh, in particular in this uh, task we couldn't find uh, any um, relevant uh, data set so we created uh, our own and uh, um, we also um, decided to explore uh, another uh, direction of uh, this uh, research and uh, to check whether a uh, model trained on uh, some foreign uh, data sets from foreign domains and foreign languages can be applied uh, on the negative campaign uh, data. Uh, so we uh, state three, um, three research questions which we aim to answer. Uh, the first one, uh, which models and representations are the best for negative campaign detection in Hebrew? Uh, the second question uh, uh, deals with the transfer learning, uh, where we uh, try to explore whether transfer learning from offensive language uh, domain can help. And uh, the third question uh, is whether meta learning and the other languages can help. So our pipeline uh, looks like a general classification pipeline. We uh, pre-process 
our text, we build the representation model and then uh, submit um, um, those uh, texts to classification model. Um, we use uh, four different uh, data sets. Uh, the first one was collected by ourselves. We call it tonic data set. It's, it contains a uh, text on Hebrew, uh, which we collected from Facebook. Uh, all the, those uh, posts are written by uh, uh, political uh, candidates uh, who run for mayor posts. Um, uh, also, we used three different uh, data sets uh, from the offensive language uh, domain. Uh, one of them uh, uh, contains Hebrew text, it's called Ola data set, and uh, another one uh, contains Arabic text, it's called Ola Art data set, and uh, the third one, uh, Ola data set, uh, contains English uh, text. Um, we explored three different setups for our uh, experiments. Mono domain, where we train and test uh, all our models uh, and the representations on the tonic data set. Monolingual uh, cross domain uh, scenario, when we train our approach on the uh, all a data set and test it on tonic and cross-lingual cross-domain uh, scenario where we train our approach on the uh, two uh, data sets uh, in foreign languages and they test uh, uh, the trained models on tonic. Uh, we explored the different text representations uh, starting from classic uh, term frequency and verse document frequency and n-grams of uh, characters and um, ending with built sentence embeddings and sentiment weights. Uh, um, as classification models, we apply three different uh, traditional uh, classifiers uh, like random forest, uh, logistic regression and extreme uh, gradient booster. And also, we try two different pre-trained models of BERT. One of them is trained on the multiple languages, so we call it multilingual BERT. And another one is trained uh, exclusively on Hebrew text, and we call it Aleph BERT. Also, we uh, explored a um, relatively new model of uh, meta learning uh, called the uh, mammal um, and uh, all those uh, models uh, were applied on all three scenarios so here you can see the example of our tonic data set of course it was translated uh, to uh, english because uh, as i said original texts are written on hebrew and you can see here one text from the positive uh, class uh, neg uh, that represents negative uh, campaign and another one is uh, from a, a negative uh, class and uh, it doesn't contain negative campaign. Um, so the first uh, post, is, as you can see, it's... Um, <coughs> um, uh, it's uh, uh, about um, it's actually it's written by um, um, one of the candidates, and uh, it uh, criticizes the current uh, mayor or another um, or the uh, another candidate um, um, about uh, his uh, policy towards. Uh, uh, managing uh, uh, some big uh, park of uh, Ashdod. Ashdod is a southern city of Israel, and um, uh, so uh, this candidate who wrote it, it claims that um, currently the park cannot be visited by all residents, but only 
or by ultra orthodox residents because it is closed uh, on a Saturday and um, it's not conven convenient for uh, uh, other residents. And another post was um, um, actually it's a regular post. Uh, it doesn't contain a negative uh, campaign because it uh, just reports some uh, uh, visit of uh, um, different uh, districts and um, uh, about meeting the residents and hearing what they like or dislike in the city. So here you can see some statistics uh, related to uh, our data sets. Uh, our data set including different cities and the uh, different uh, regions uh, they belong to. We divided all cities to three regions, uh, central, south and north. And um, uh, from each city we have from one to four candidates. Um, you can see also the distribution between positive and negative classes positive class it's a negative campaign and negative class it doesn't contain negative campaign um, also you can see average number of words and characters in the post uh, uh, for each city so um, uh, as I said we apply transfer learning from three different uh, data sets from foreign domain of offensive language and um, all these data sets are written in different language. One of them is written on Hebrew, another on Arabic, and the third one on English. Uh, they are very different uh, in size. Uh, the smallest one is Ola, and uh, the biggest one is Olid. Uh, so here you can see uh, the setups for our experiments. As I said, we explored three scenarios, monolingual, uh, monodomain uh, models. We train and test on tonic data set. Uh, we train set uh, composed of 80% of samples and test set it's 20% of uh, data. Uh, monolingual uh, cross-domain models were uh, trained and tested on the same language Hebrew but on different uh, data sets. We train them on all the data set on the um, uh, samples annotated with uh, offensive uh, language related uh, labels and we apply uh, the trained models on the test set of toning data set. And in, in cross-lingual cross-domain uh, scenarios we um, train and test our models on different uh, domains and different languages. Uh, we train them on uh, uh, all the data set or all the data set and test the trained models on the on tonic data set. Um, um, as Say I already mentioned, we um, explored different text representations in our uh, approach and um, um, not all of those text representations are um, uh, appropriate for cross-lingual and multilingual experiments. Uh, therefore, um, a long list of uh, representation models uh, which were applied for monolingual um, uh, scenarios uh, actually becomes a, a very short one in cross-lingual uh, experiments. Uh, for monolingual experiments we applied the classic TF-IDF vectors and n-grams um, and uh, for uh, sentiment weights and for cross-lingual experiments, we applied only BERT sentence embeddings produced by multilingual BERT model. Uh, we concatenated BERT embeddings for entire posts, also for a city, 
and uh, for region of uh, the country. Uh, so we uh, explored three different categories of classification models. Um, we tried three different traditional machine, machine learning models, uh, random forest, uh, logistic regression, and extreme gradient booster. Uh, also, we tried two different uh, models of a uh, bird. Uh, one of them was trained on uh, multiple languages, and another was trained only on Hebrew. And uh, we also explored the uh, meta-learning model. In particular, we adopted model agnostic meta-learning. So uh, model agnostic meta-learning actually uh, trains a model on different learning tasks and uh, then it can uh, adjust uh, the learned uh, models uh, uh, very quickly to new learning tasks using a small number of samples. It's a big advantage of uh, uh, meta-learning. Uh, so um, we uh, produced different tasks uh, by uh, performing uh, different uh, principles of splitting our data. Uh, so in first approach, we split data by politician. So we train our model on um, the data um, of some uh, politicians, and then we adjust uh, the trained model on the data of a new politician um, and the, in the second approach we split our data by city so uh, we train our model um, on different tasks representing different cities and the, in third approach we split our data by region and they train our model on the uh, data related to different uh, regions um, here you can see the results of monodomain uh, tests. Uh, what can we observe here is, uh, first of all, uh, that the extreme gradient booster uh, in general outperforms other models. And the, also that the um, uh, rich uh, text representation, including turn frequency, inverse document frequency, engrams and sentiment labels uh, outperform uh, other uh, representations. Um, um, here you can see um, monodomain tests uh, uh, produced by um, um, results produced by um, um, the same models but applied on the uh, word the vectors on sentence embeddings and uh, we combine those sentence embeddings with different uh, additional information like uh, location and region uh, embeddings and the uh, tfidf and uh, also engrams and uh, what we observed is that the uh, extreme uh, gradient boosters booster outperformed other models again, and also that adding location and region information improves uh, its performance. Um, and uh, the last table related to monodomain test, it's a table reporting about the uh, PERT and meta learning results. So here we can observe that, uh, first of all, Arif bird performs better than multilingual uh, bird. Uh, and uh, apparently it's because uh, a model trained on a target language uh, is more accurate than a model trained on multiple languages. Uh, also, we can observe that meta-learning does not perform better than bird. And they also, if you compare between different uh, tasks, between different uh, splitting uh, criteria, uh, we can see that uh, 
uh, split by politician uh, outperforms other splitting for meta learning. Uh, here you can see the results of a cross domain test, uh, but uh, multi uh, sorry monolingual when we uh, train and test our models on the same language on Hebrew. So here once again we uh, we can uh, evidence uh, that XGB is a better model than others. Um, here, actually, we cannot uh, conclude uh, um, nothing uh, significant except that maybe Aleph bird performs slightly better than uh, multilingual bird. And, uh, here, uh, you can see the results of a uh, uh, cross uh, domain uh, but uh, monolingual uh, test. Uh, Aleph bird uh, again outperforms a uh, multilingual bird. Uh, meta learning performs better than bird uh, this time. Um, yeah. Uh, if we compare between the uh, uh, cross lingual test, we can see that. Um, Training on English uh, gives better precision and recall, while training on Arabic provides better uh, accuracy and F1. Uh, regarding the models, we cannot uh, conclude the anything. And um, when we apply uh, fine-tuned uh, multilingual BERT and meta-learning, um, uh, surprisingly, uh, we observed that Transfer learning from English works better in both cases, and the, apparently it's because the size of the uh, English data set, which is uh, uh, twice bigger than the uh, Arabic data set. So, uh, to conclude the, uh, all our um, uh, case study, uh, we can see that the gradient uh, booster uh, with sentence embeddings uh, enriched with region and location information outperforms the other models. Uh, we can see that meta learning does not uh, perform well, does not uh, outperform traditional models and fine tuned BERT in the uh, mono domain uh, scenario. Uh, and uh, we can see that Aleph BERT model trained on Hebrew is preferable to a multilingual BERT model in the cross domain and cross lingual experiments. Also, we can see that meta learning outperforms traditional models um, in the cross domain and cross lingual uh, uh, experiments. And they also, from cross lingual experiments, we can see that training on a large set in a foreign language can be even more efficient than training on Hebrew. Uh, it. Uh, if you have questions, I will be happy to answer.